never done any modeling was like i'm just gonna go for it and so that's how i got into modeling this is anything and everything a space for creators talent and entertainers such as medium actors models musicians and creatives who bring production to life a place to be seen to be heard to share their stories and advice with the world and a place to be celebrated life shrinks or expands in proportion to one's courage Trust me, you are not going to want to miss this. Be sure to tune in to the YouTube channel every Friday. See you guys there. <laughs> All right, welcome to the show. I always get so nervous. I don't know why. We'll play a couple games. This is Anything and Everything. Welcome back. I'm your host, Jessica Shea. And today we have published fashion supermodel and actress, Michelle Carty. Hi, everyone. Michelle. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. It's been wonderful to know that people are taking the time to come. And to me, that's like, that means a lot. You know what I mean? Like people are actually taking the time to come be a part of this. You're a fashion model. And I saw like you posted something really recently. Uh, they did like story on you. Yeah. So I, I did an interview with Shout Out LA. Okay. Um, so just asking me about you know, my career as a model and actress, how I got started. There's some other fun questions in there, like if I'm a risk taker, how I view risks, yeah. who I have to thank for where I'm at today. So it was very cool to be featured by them. And I have a couple of other interviews coming out soon as well um, in the next couple of weeks. So, okay. yeah. Can you, can you talk about them or not yet? <laughs> not yet. They're with Bold Journey and Canvas Rebel, but they're not done yet. So can't share the content, but it's to come. So if you're interested. I'll check it out. I'll definitely check it out. If you post it or even if you DM me the link, so I definitely will check it out. I love to support. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Exciting. That. Isn't it? So you've been busy. I met you at the Maxim Carnival Vegas, right? Yes. That was the first time we met, right? Okay. Okay. I was making sure because sometimes I forget like where I meet. I know. When you're out in LA, you meet so many people. It just constantly, it's so hard to keep track. Tell me all about how you got involved, what you thought about it, and let's talk about it a little bit. Yeah, so how I got involved, um, I was at an event, and I know some of the guys who were putting it on, and they were like, oh, you should definitely apply. We like, we think you'd be great for it. So I submitted, got accepted. It was such a fun weekend. Um, like, made so many friends that weekend. All the girls, they were amazing. I got to walk in the fashion show. Okay, so you got to walk in the fashion show. Great weekend. I have to agree. It was one of the best weekends in Vegas that I've had in a while, because of all the girls I got to meet and hang out with, and... Uh, I got lucky because I didn't have to share a room with anyone. I think the girls I was supposed to share a room with didn't show up. So I had oh my to do it myself. Yeah. So I made for a great space and I could do what I want and get the sleep I needed. And I'm not really into partying as much anymore. So I didn't stay out too late. Maybe one day I went to the club because they were like, yeah, you don't have to go. We would like for you to at least show face and then you can and like i know there was like two different tables and i was like the one behind the tt booth yeah yeah were you oh, there? yeah i was back there too i didn't see you oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> okay because i think we had like all three tables maybe you were like at the one on the left or the so right. i don't think we had the tables behind the dj booth oh no tiesto i don't think those are ours you know, the one who ran whatsapp oh yeah there's ken kimberly yeah her name kimberly, kimberly. And Anthony, the night that we had the actual event inside Gatsby, the light bulbs were all like hanging out. And I like went to Anthony. Anthony was like another one who was like running. I'm oh, sorry. Hold on. So we're drinking. We're having a good time. We're hanging out with people. They started grabbing a couple girls and like, we need to go now. Because if we don't go now, we're going to miss the opportunity maybe to get behind the DJ booth. And then they walked us right behind the DJ booth. Okay. So I walked over with everyone else and we just went to the two tables on the side. That's where the actual bottles are. Yeah. But so I love Tiesto. And I was, I don't really drink either. And so, like, I was out and I was sharp. And I was like, I got to be up there with Tiesto tonight. Yeah. So I found my way over there. But I didn't see anyone else up oh, there. Okay. Yeah. We were walked into the DJ booth with no problem. Well, you got lucky. I had to, like, yeah. find my own way. <laughs> it's crazy because I was like, if I leave, I'm not going to be able to get back yeah. in now. <laughs> Did notice that they did have that few tables where Maxim had bottles in front of the DJ booth, which somehow I didn't end up there. I don't know what it was, timing, or like they picked a couple of people to do this one and do that one. I was just hanging out and they just like pulled us. It was like after everyone had already went. And so we were like the last few. And because all the girls who were like selected to wear like feathers and like walk in the fashion show, they had their like pick and choose who they wanted wear. And I wasn't one of those girls. They ended up taking that group of girls first over there. Like, yeah, because we all walked over together. Yeah. yeah. And we were the stragglers. You're actually the VIP though. <laughs> and I got lucky the next day to like wear the purple outfit. 
So I was like, okay, like at least I got to do something exciting with it because I didn't do the fashion show. So at least they picked me for something. Because then I would have felt so bad if I was like, didn't even get chosen. They had like the casting call at the cigar bar, decision making time. So I left that first event thinking, well, I'm probably not one of the girls to be picked to wear the bikini. I'm just happy to be here. I was happy to be there. I was like, I'm just glad that they invited me. They took care of the room. And I was so shocked to be one of the girls they picked. I was happy. Like, I don't know why you were shocked. Look at you. I <laughs> An obvious to it. <laughs> Thank you. It was a really good experience. And I, I was like, please invite me back. As I get older, I take things more business-wise. And I know that trip, I totally did. I'm going to go to bed early. I'm going to get up early and do what I have to do to prepare me on time. And like, you came with an agent or like you had like a manager that was there, a team. Some girls were missing out on the information that they were supposed to be receiving as far as the like, colors that they're supposed to wear to the party, right? Please make sure you read thoroughly the expectations that we want in the contract because the contract even specified like certain things they were expecting of us. If you want to be a brand ambassador at the end or you want to be labeled as a brand ambassador, you want to be chosen for certain things, like you have to show up to these events. Don't miss these events. Right. Like some girls missed some of the events that like they were supposed to show up to that weren't optional. When it came down to like the last day and they were like picking girls, like girls were like, why didn't I get picked? I love representing myself because I knew if I missed information, it was my fault. But I felt so good about, I got all the information, it showed up in the right colors. But what was really tough is they told us about some of the colors right before the event. And it's like, we packed to like how it. Yeah. yeah. We're like, how are we supposed to know? Like, we don't have that. That happened to me too. And I just got lucky because I had also had a photo shoot earlier before all the events. And so I had all this other stuff and I was like oh my gosh thank god I have the right color was you know no kidding yeah I was like Leah why would they do that yeah like, some people are traveling in so like how are we like what if we don't have a pink out right. purple outfit like would you do it again if they like did oh yeah I would absolutely do it again I had so much fun yeah. like I said like made so many friends a lot of good connections too it's like overall such a good experience for me how often are you on set and like are you like constantly booking do you have an agent that does this for you so modeling I'm freelance I always have been kind of by choice. I started modeling back in 2019. Very random for me. Like I had never done anything like it before, but I signed up for the Miss New York USA pageant. Ooh. I was living in New York at the time doing grad school. Yeah. And I had just come back from South Africa where I was teaching. Oh, wow. Started grad school like within a week of coming back from South Africa. Yeah. So at that point, like I wanted to do an internship, but it was too late. So I need something to fill my time because I can't sit still and like got an Instagram ad for the Miss New York USA pageant. I was like, I'm going to sign up. Yeah. Which is like very weird for me. I was so shy, like didn't like being the center of attention. Like I said, never done any modeling. Was like, I'm just going to go for it. Yeah. And so that's how I got into modeling is through that because like in preparing, I was like, well, I want to do photo shoots and, you know look the part and everything get that experience um didn't win i was not miss what you listen <laughs> but again like similar to max i like met so many amazing girls it was such a good experience like i grew so much as a person as well and then fell into modeling through that yeah okay so, um started modeling in new york city and then i had considered signing with agencies every once in a while i still do but for me like i'm i'm really good at managing myself i'm like you or like i view myself as a business yeah. and like i'm always working so like the Literally every single day, I'm like submitting myself for different jobs that I'm finding online or like messaging designers and everything. Um, but I like the freedom yeah. that you have with being freelance. And I travel a lot too. So. Right, right. I kind of like, I like to be my own boss. Right. So, so much better, honestly. Yeah. Like it's harder. Like you have to hustle. Like I never stop working. Right. Like I never stop moving. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it's what I love, so. That's good. And that's the name of the game. You're, no one's finding the work for you. You gotta find it yourself. But apply, show up. The hardest thing for me has always been I, I'll book and I'll submit and then I'll struggle to like actually fall through or like to like show up sometimes because I get in my own way, I get in my own head. You know, it's like insecurities or just like I was tired of putting so much energy into modeling and not really getting paid. Most of the time they were like volunteer gigs and I'm like, how can a person make this a career? Like for someone like me, like, I, you know, most people might actually book paying gigs more often because their portfolio or their experience or their looks. And for me, like I love fashion or like runway, but I don't make money at it. So I do it because I love it. But I, at some point it's like, I can only put so much time and energy into it because at what extent when I'm not making money, do I continue to like put my energy into other people's like projects and stuff? Art Heart, Michael Castell. Yeah, she had her photo Photoshop so much. She was so disappointed because she didn't get paid. So she wanted her acknowledgement, her credit. 
And as a model, it's like you want to be able to show people on like the designer's page, like this is me. He was just on the Golden Bachelor. So he's doing work. And so like to be a part of it is like uh, a lot for a model to say, hey, like I was a part of this designer's piece. But then when you go to his page, the outfit that this girl was wearing is now in a completely different model representing it. And you're like, now she can't have that credit or the say and show it off to people. We as models, when we volunteer, we want our credit at least or acknowledgement that we did that we did the thing. How you felt about that? I mean, I think it's crazy that they did that because, I mean, we don't, like, does she even live in the same city? Did she pay for flights and hotels and everything to get out there and, like, do the show? It could have cost her a lot of money, too. And then to not get the credit, I would be so upset, honestly. Yeah. And, like, also, I would have been so proud to just be in the show. Right. And then to have them take your face out of it. Yeah. Like, that's heartbreaking. Yeah. That's, I think, how she felt was yeah. very disappointed. Yeah. But it is so hard to find paid jobs, especially it's so competitive, yeah. too. And so, I like, runway is hardly ever paid. Yeah. And it's fun. Yeah. It's good experience. Good to have the photos for your portfolio. I kind of got into modeling because I loved it and I thought it was fun. And I don't know if I even ever considered doing it full time because it is so hard. Mm -hmm to make a living doing it yeah and so i feel like if you're modeling like you need other things to supplement it like whether you're making money through social media or like other jobs or something like to actually do modeling full-time is so difficult nowadays it is to try to make it like you're you're stable income, yeah which it's really not and it, it may never be unless you're just on the top of the game no i've, I've had the same way like i've made it this far and like I've done a lot of, like, I did Miami Swim Week this year, New York Fashion Week, LA Fashion Week. Like, I've been getting paid gigs, too, around LA. So, like, I've done a lot on my own. And so it, it would be hard for me to sign with an agency at this point. Yeah. But it's funny because I have even had someone told me, like, a month ago, they were like, well, like, I'd recommend you for this agency, but you need to build your portfolio a little bit. And I was like, I've been modeling for four years. Like, I have four years of photos and things that I've done. So it, it's so crazy because there's some people who get with an agency because they're new. And then there's other people who it's like, you've been doing it for years yeah. and like, it's still hard to get one yeah. anyway. Right. It, you could have such a great portfolio and people are just like, well, too many people on our roster. That's how it's always been for me. Like I tried when I first moved to LA. I was like, maybe I will try to submit to like the biggest. Like, like, I had a list of like agents. Oh, I've done it too. I, yeah. I'm not going to lie. I've submitted to just so many agencies. <laughs> yeah. They have like the open calls. So yeah. Like, yeah. Go to Will Amina and like show up on Wednesday. And uh, they never wanted me for sure. But I also feel like a lot of times when I was like doing the open calls for the agencies, I wasn't taking care of myself. So it showed. And I think as a model, like one of the first things they look for right away is how well did you take care of yourself? When I came to LA, it took me so long to get comfortable. To to get situated to where I could finally feel like I'm confident enough to walk into this yeah. into this meeting and nail it. And so many times I got in my own way, which is why I decided to make my business from home. <laughs> like, <laughs> now I'm here from home. I don't blame you. This is a nice setup here. <laughs> Thank you. How long have you been modeling? You said since 2019. What were some of like your favorite jobs that you did? You said Maxim was one of them probably, right? Yeah, Maxim is really fun. I love doing runway. So New York Fashion Week I did this year. It was amazing. Was it your first New York? It was. Yeah, oh, it was. Yes. <laughs> love that. Okay, tell, tell me a little bit about it. Um, so, I mean, I was just happy to be there. Like, I was like, as long as I walk in one show, like, I'm good. I'm happy. I actually got cast in a lot of shows, like, more than I could have done. It's hard because there's so many overlapping ones. Yeah. Um, but I walked in, like, maybe five shows for Runway 7. Um, which is really exciting for me. And I got to do a lot of different looks too, which is fun. That's so but fun. yeah, so that was such an amazing experience. Yeah. Um, so I love New York Fashion Week. Like fashion weeks are hard. They're so exhausting. Right. And so like, the first one I did was Miami Swim Week. That was also this year. And that was fun. But so for first some, Miami Swim Week yeah. too. Oh, wow. But that's, I think like Miami Swim Week is hard because there's castings all throughout the week and then there's shows all throughout the week. So it's like you're, casting in the 90 degree heat for hours in the morning then you're on the runway that evening like you haven't had time to shower it's like that was a fun experience but it was so tiring yeah I can imagine so were you doing all your own booking and stuff yeah 
That's a lot. A couple of years ago, before um, the pandemic, I was traveling to New York and I was also, when I lived in Miami, so I used to Miami, so I lived there. So I used to do swim week and then I would fly out to do the New York thing. And then I started branching out to doing LA Fashion Week, very familiar with most of the cities in Fashion Week. So I did the whole New York thing, waiting in line longer than three blocks long. Now that there was multiple shows that I did, I think there was this one Fashion Week during New York Fashion Week that I went to where I had overbooked myself. And I had a fitting, a show, a casting, another fitting, a show. And like they, they take hours, whether it's the show or the fitting or the casting alone. Was lucky enough to have sponsors. So people were taking care of like the flights, the hotels and stuff. But there was a point where I was in this really nice hotel towards the end of the week and I had overdid myself. I was burning myself out. Ended up having a complete mental breakdown because I was getting like no sleep because I, that was the time I was partying because I was going to the after parties. And then I was like, hey, I don't out. know how you did that. Yeah, I know it was tough. And I just remember like the W in Times Square. And I was at the 56th floor or something. It was like the top floor and they usually don't rent them out. And the view was just beautiful of all of like New York and it was really high up. And I'm sitting there looking over the city and I'm like, wow, this is like, I'm in the best position. Exactly where I want to be in New York fashion, like doing fittings, runway, you know, hanging out with my photographers and we're doing the after parties. And I still felt so empty and I didn't know what it was. And I think a lot of it was just because I had overworked myself and I was so busy traveling around modeling that I didn't have any solid friendships or connections or partners or whatever. And it was tough. That was, I felt alone, but have you ever felt that way? Oh yeah. Have you ever been in a place where you're like, I'm doing too much and I'm overwhelmed and burnt out? Yeah. So <laughs> If you know me well, like, you know, I never stop moving. So like I, even before I came in here, I was like, I need to slow down probably knowing very well that I'm not going to. <laughs> Miami Swim Week, there was definitely a moment where like I, I went there alone and like I know some people in Miami, but I was so busy that I wasn't seeing anyone. So there was times I'd go back to the room at night and just be like, I'm almost like too tired to cry even. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my God. New York Fashion Week, there was a morning on the last day where I was like, I don't know if I can walk today, even though this is my dream. I was so tired that I was like, I don't know if I can get out there and do it. But like you, you do, you, do. Like, you just keep going. Yeah. yeah. So it's definitely hard. I feel like everyone has those moments and in this industry too, because like you're putting yourself out there. So it's hard like when you're exhausted and then you have to look amazing yeah you show up act like you're not tired and like you're feeling confident in everything even when you're not right it's a hard industry to be in true yeah we and we do it and you, you did it you do it very well i see your photos and i'm like she's failing it <laughs> if i'm kind of outside as far as like uh age wise and stuff and like i've already done the whole thing so i didn't go to new york fashion week this time i was like i just i just don't care for it anymore you know i'm just like i i, I might get booked i might walk a show or maybe a few but i was just like it's a lot it's a lot and for me i'm like well maybe not this season and as i get older i just don't care as much but i do love it i am very passionate about it but when i see other people doing it i can relate so much because i'm like yeah it's like dreaming and doing and and, and trying to get other people to the beautiful girls around me like go do it walk the runway show come to the casting with me like you can do it like and they you know they say i want to do it i want to do it but they never do it so i see girls doing it i get excited i'm like yeah she's doing it i'm definitely a supporter of like when i see people who are just like making their dreams come true because you know it's like most of the time the girls that are walking in runway are doing it because they're truly passionate about it and because it's something that they've either always wanted to do or for a while have been considering doing and finally get to do it or finally find themselves confident enough to do it. Well, for me, like if you had asked me in January if I would have walked in any of those shows, I would have said no. Like I did not see myself doing any of that. I just like I didn't have the self-confidence. Oh, really? Honestly, yeah. When I went to Miami Swim Week, I felt like such an imposter. I was like, how did I even get here? Yeah, I so better. <laughs> So like, and then after I did Miami, I was like, okay, well, like maybe I should go for New York. Not really even expecting that I would get in New York Fashion Week. Yeah. So for me, like it was all like, I was like shocked that I was even there, to be honest. I mean, look at you. You definitely can pose. You can model. You look good. You take care of yourself. People get books all the time that you would question like, why are they getting booked? But it, it is what it is. Sometimes we, they need different looks for everything. And I think the industry is changing a lot now. So yeah, they're definitely that. opening up the doors for people who aren't seven feet tall or, you know, and, and plus size girls can walk now in shows and get acknowledged and stuff. And before, like 10 years ago, it was like, gee, we're a little overweight. Chances are you weren't even getting booked. And mm then -hmm. it's crazy. Yeah, it's changed so much. Like casting for me, I don't really take it personally when I don't 
get booked for something. Yeah, because I think there are the designers, they know exactly what they're looking for. And so like maybe I had a great walk and I did a good job, but they just don't want a blonde. Right. So, but, you know, exactly. like you have no idea. And so like that definitely helped me is thinking of it that way. So like because with anything, you go to so many castings and you don't always get booked. Most of the time you don't. Yeah. And like that's hard. But it is. I think that's the way I started viewing it so that I could have like the mindset to be able to push through and everything. Yeah. First couple of times I did runway or casting, was very nervous, got my own way and thought I don't belong here. And yeah. I'm doing the imposter thing, too. And it's, you have to just tell yourself, like, you will never be there and actually be it or be the one. Unless you truly believe or feel yeah. that you are in the Los Angeles fashion show. Did we walk for these desires together or did we? We did. Did we or did we not? Did you walk on Wednesday? No, you didn't. No, I think it was just Saturday. No, that was the one day I didn't walk. Okay. Yeah. So we didn't walk yeah. any shows together, but I didn't see you walk. We saw each other. There. Yeah, we saw each other there. I got to interview you for a few minutes. I had a lot of equipment issues, but I still have that footage and we'll use what we can of it when we can. I haven't really gone through a lot of like, fashion week food checks. I kind of jumped right into this. Yeah. I should probably get to that eventually. I did interview a lot of people. There was like a Saturday night where they were everybody was upstairs and we were just like walking around. I only wanted to interview like maybe three or four people, but then it turned into where everyone was like drinking and they wanted to be part of the interview. Yeah. They saw me doing someone else. Both mics die and they're like we don't care let's do it anyways and i was like okay and so i have like all this footage of people that were at the show who knows what the quality looks like but i'll take a look at it later and go through it and see what i can use yeah uh, just, there's a lot of footage because at one point i was like i loved that everybody wanted to be a part of like the interview thing but at some point i was like tired and i was like i don't know how much more i want to like film people asking the same questions and i'm like my equipment's dying my phone was dying um, maybe not, but I was like, okay. And I don't think you were there for that, but I was No, I wasn't there on Saturday. But you know how people are. It's like they see someone with the microphone, they're like, let me get my content, let me get my face out there. Yeah. Cause nowadays you just never know. Like you see somebody with a camera and a microphone and you think they are probably creating viral content. Like you just don't know, even if you don't know. Yeah. You may not even know them, but they might be viral. Like people want to be a part of it. They see you filming and they're like, um, I wanna be a part of what you're filming because if you go viral then I want to be a part of it you know what I mean it's good to see that people aren't afraid to be a part of things which is good back in the day like when someone had a camera people were like running hot I had it that <laughs> sort of I know I would <laughs> I had to remember doing that like as a kid I remember I was on a family vacation and someone came up with a camera and a microphone my whole family was like we need to get out of here <laughs> like we don't want we don't know what this is we don't want to be off it <laughs> yeah right don't know where your face right. is gonna <laughs> what is something that you would probably want to change from the fashion industry probably the pay yeah honestly so many models are out there working so hard and not getting anything for it and it's sad because modeling is hard like people probably look at it and they're like oh you're just kind of standing there taking pictures but like you have to take such good care of yourself all the time like eating healthy working out like mm -hmm. care of your skin and everything and yeah. it's so hard to find jobs if you do a lot of the time they're not paid that much either if they're paid at all i think it's sad that like it's so hard to make money doing what you love yeah it is I've been doing YouTube for a while and it's definitely not sustainable, but I love it. <laughs> yeah. And the goal hopefully one day is to make it where it can be sustainable and hey, real mm -hmm. well. But in modeling, I'm like giving up because I'm modeling because it's not, not paying. Like, but I'm also so far from LA, so it's like really hard to stay involved when I know it's not paying. We pay. I feel like you have to be in LA or New York if you want to model. Yeah. Because you have to be active. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, when I started modeling, I was spending a lot of time in Ohio, where I'm from. And I was doing a lot of photo shoots, but there's just not a lot of paid opportunities okay. there. Cool. Uh, but when I came to L.A., I was surprised at how much easier it was to find things. Yeah. It's different. I think out here, like, also, besides, like, modeling, like, your personality, that kind of helps a lot, too. Because when I came here, they told me, like, you have to do something more than just model. Like, you're going to have to act. You're going to have to perform, entertain, put on a show. And so I started doing YouTube and trying to become more like entertaining or comedic and so I'm like okay I'll just pull my personality a little bit yeah no you have to I mean even with agencies when I've looked into applying they're like what is your social media presence like mm -hmm. when you put on TikTok and like you have to do all the things yeah but it, like they know people want the exposure because we go into these things and we accept them even though they're not paid because we want the exposure and the experience because we're hoping that at one point we'll be at a point where we'll get paid for it yeah and so they can continue to do it i still do unpaid things yeah <laughs> you know like we're still gonna do it mm -hmm.
I still showed up to that production knowing. Exactly. Yeah, I wasn't getting paid. <laughs> I started to have to pick and choose though. Yeah. Because now, now it's if your production just simply doesn't have a, enough following on Instagram or there's not enough media around it. If it's not paid, I'm not going to waste my time. I can't. Right. I don't have the money to drive to LA every day. No, at some point you do have to stand up for yourself and say, I'm worth something, like doesn't pay something for this, whatever it is. But it is hard because it's hard to turn down opportunities that could lead somewhere because you never know like who you're going to meet and who's going to see you. And that that's what kills me is like, I never want to turn anything down because like, you never know who's going to see it and who might reach out to you after they see it and where that could lead. And so, like, it's so hard to turn things down even when they're not paid. True. I almost didn't do the maximum thing because, like, well, that's a big name and that good exposure and could be a good, fun weekend. And so I, I did it either way. Um, and then there were gigs that I was invited to do, but the terms and conditions as far as, like, what they told us that we had to expect, I was like, well, I think I'm just going to have to hop out of this one. So I, I've had to say no a few times to some stuff, unfortunately. But I also don't live in L.A. anymore, so it is hard, you know. Yeah, I have to be picky. And I also have been in the industry for 20 years plus, like since I was like two. Oh my God. Like, like 29 years. 29 years. Insane. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm like, I, at some point I feel like it's, it's not a portfolio thing. I have right. plenty of experience. I've worked with big names and I'm like, it's more of just relevancy. And also like, if you're just not what they're looking for, then simply they'll let you be a part of it. But then maybe you don't get paid. So now I'm having to pick and choose because it is tough because you never know mm -hmm. who you're going to work with. There was this one gig that I got booked for and it was paid, thank God. But I went to it because every time I book something, I always do my research and I'm always looking for like a name that like stands out or something like a director or whatever. And this particular one didn't have any information connected to it that I was like, this is cool. Like, but I did it because it was paid. I show up to set and we get like halfway through and I see somebody behind the camera directing people that looks familiar. And I thought at first, I was like, well, he probably just looked like that guy. Right as I was leaving, he happens to walk by me and I stop him and I go, are you that guy that does the, and he goes, the glam bot? And I'm like, yes. You know, the guy with the curly hair that does the red carpet, high speed, slow motion. Yeah. So he was the director on set for this, this pilot. Yeah. That I was like selected to, that was just like a pitch pilot. So they never actually, like, I don't think they actually aired the show, but. So I never got to see that footage, but I got to work for Cole Walliser and I was so like shocked that it was like, I almost didn't go to that thing. Cause I was just like, what's the point? But because it was paid was the only reason why I did. And, and then I was like, wow, you never know who you're going to work with. I got in my car. so excited because I got to meet him and I called my mom and I was like nearly in tears. She's no idea who Cole Walliser is, but I was so shocked. That I was like, this really popular like glam bot guy from the red carpet like everyone that he shoots all the celebrities she's like what does that even mean <laughs> yeah she's no idea but i was so excited that i was in like cloud nine all the way home that i was just like wow you just never know yeah and uh, i got to meet somebody that i had previously hoped to work with or had eventually hoped sh that would shoot me on the glam bot because i was like who doesn't want to be on the red carpet and like get that moment where you get that high speed slow motion <laughs> camera shot you know that goes viral and that was popping off during quarantine and I used to be a big fan of seeing his content. And so I got to finally work with him. And I was like, yeah, you never know who you end up like working with. Yeah, and who you're going to work with or like who those people are friends with. And they might recommend you after seeing you as well. That's what it's like. You just never know. And even like you said, you don't really go out anymore. Like I only go out to meet people. Like I, when I go out, I'm not going out to have fun really. And like, I don't really drink, but it's like, you don't know who you're going to run into, especially in LA. Yeah. Like you never know. It's true. It's true. Crazy. It, LA, that's what made me want to live in LA because I had the option to move to New York or LA. And I told LA because there's just so much opportunity to be around popular people, successful people, celebrities. And like it tapped. Like, and I was like, this is where I want to be. Yeah. So I'm, I'm a little sad that I'm not as close to LA, but I'm, I'm happy with the environment here because I think mentally like beach is better and in Hollywood was just too too much for me but I miss being close to everything as far as the studios and the jobs and I saw like they were paying people to come on Bachelor as extras like they needed you to be there within three hours and when I saw it I was like there's no way I'm gonna be able to get a shower get in the car and hit, get there in time from traffic if I was in LA I'd be there in three hours for sure but that would be like most traffic and would I be able to get ready and get out the door in time? No. And so I was like, dang, like things like that. So last minute. Right. Like, uh, Wyoming is so last minute in LA oh too. Yeah. No, but I, I love it there for now, but I could see how it'd be hard to be there for a while because yeah. I, I'm in West Hollywood. Every time I leave West Hollywood after I've been there for a while and I go to the beach or something, I'm like, oh, it's so different. Like, I don't think I took a breath that whole time. <laughs> yeah. 
it feels different out here. That's why I like it. I get my anxiety. Like I react off of energies around me. So when I was in LA, like, I mean, I couldn't even really walk my dogs during the day because the homeless would come up and want to pet my dogs. And it's not that I don't want to conversate with them. It's just sometimes I'm not in the right head frame or the right mood to really deal with anyone. And also just for safety reasons, like there's a lot of con artists, like they get too closed, like pickpocketing, you know, all these things. And like there's a lot of tourists out there and it's just people you can't trust. And so I lived right on right, right next to Holly Boulevard and Sunset and Vine, which is like a block from Holly Boulevard. Yeah. And so it's just a lot of really bad activity. And yeah. during COVID, it's even worse, you know, the riots and stuff and CNN being right there. So I, I had to move and I'm happy on the beach because I grew up on the beach. Oh, no. When I was driving in here, I'm like, it's so cute here, like so peaceful. I'm like, wow, she has a, she has a maid here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It feels like and that's why I don't want to leave. But I'm like, I can't even commute to LA as often as I want. But it's tough. So it's a give or take. You know, it's one of those where I can't have it all. If I could have this in LA, I would. But can't there I am I would rather be here because I'm happier here for sure yeah it definitely is much more calmer and quiet out here I can walk my dogs any time of the day and feel safe for the most part yeah and when you're in this industry like you need to be able to take care of yourself and your mental health and like if that means living near the beach and like that's what you have to do to be able to like sustain yourself and to keep doing this for years so it's true especially when you have a lot of eyes on you yeah. where you have to show up and you're competing against a lot of people for a job um constantly like the interviews where the castings and you have to show up and you have to shine and you have to glow. And if you're not there, which has happened to me so many times in my, in my career where I got my own way, yeah. where I let my environment get in my way, I reflected and I didn't do as good as I could have. And I ended up losing opportunities because I wasn't in the right mind frame. I think like your homebound area is so valid to how you project in your career and even just booking. And I'm happier now because I'm so much more confident and calmer and happier with my life hear that when I go to things, I'm confident yeah. and secure. So it makes it easier to do the things I want to do. Before I used to, I, there's no way I could be interviewing people because I'd be so, such a hot mess. Like, yeah, what do I say? And like, you know, and all these things. But now it's just like, just do it. You know what I mean? Right. Go do it because I feel good enough to do it or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, and sometimes we just have to play that role until we are that role. You know? Right. No, there's definitely been so many castings, auditions that I've showed up for. And I'm like, I could have done so much better if I had slowed down before or like, taking care of myself like made sure I got sleep eaten enough yeah. and like have just not gotten into it as confident as I could have been like because it, I mean it is hard to take care of yourself in this industry too yeah so it can be yeah it's a toll it takes a toll yeah right make sure you guys hit the subscribe button you're not going to want to miss part two of this we're, we'll play a couple games this first game is called speed questions I'm gonna set the timer for 30 seconds we're going to get through them as quickly as possible the first thing that pops to your mind no matter how funny how weird how awkward how crazy it is just say it uh, a name of a dog Bruce okay oh I like that vacation spot Croatia oh okay favorite color red okay uh something that starts with letter m monkeys Biggie sick um those sunglasses when guys wear those like skinny brightly colored sunglasses with a pattern like festival shirt i hate that look <laughs> okay that's okay that's fine okay the whole time rare okay celebrity crush i've never been one to have celebrity crushes okay. yeah i don't have a good one for that a lot of people um usually don't have an answer for that really yeah, yeah. okay i'm glad i'm not the only yeah. one no worries okay and something green frogs okay perfect i loved your answer three things from what you said that are so important. One, you're like kind of delusional. That's how you become successful. Hey, I did see you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. If I got that one wrong, that I did. God. I, that's why I put that there. I was like, I wonder if she's going to remember. Go. 